Vector path animations can bring icons, logos, and illustrations to life, revealing each shape with a smooth, hand-drawn motion. And we can pull it off in just a few clicks with the stroke effect in Framer. In this lesson, we'll use the stroke effect to animate a few icons with engaging motion that feels thoughtful and refined. The stroke effect is something special, and it'll only show up if we're editing layers within a vector set. So we've got to start by creating a vector set. And on the second page of our project file here, we have this stroke effect page with a few example icons that I've prepared ahead of time. And each one of these is just a group that has a bunch of vector layers in it. So these are essentially just icons drawn directly on the canvas, but we need to turn them into a vector set. And really they all belong in the same vector set. So I'm gonna hold the shift key and select each and every one of these icons because they're all kind of part of a family. And for good measure, I'm also gonna throw in this little icon here because we're gonna play with animating that. Even though it's a different size, I'm gonna hold shift, click it and add it to the same vector set. So now to create a vector set from all these, I'm gonna right click on any one of these selected groups and I'm gonna choose create vector set. And instantly we're brought into a dedicated canvas view where we can edit this vector set, which is what we wanna do. But first I'm gonna get rid of the fill here, which would be helpful if we were editing dark gray icons and we didn't wanna edit them on a dark gray background, but these have sufficient contrast on a dark background, even without a fill. Now, if you're not familiar with vector sets in the first place, much like a component, they are an asset that's found on the assets panel and they can be dragged directly onto the canvas. And if we go back to our main page here where we created the vector set from, each and every one of those icons, which was previously just a group, has been replaced with an instance of that vector set. And if we look over here on the properties panel, we can see that we have access to all of the icons within that set and we can click to swap them out but let's head back into the vector set and do some editing. I'm just gonna double click on any one of these icons to get back into that canvas view for the vector set. And now that we're editing the contents of a vector set, we've just unlocked a whole new effect, which we can apply if we select any one of these vector layers. So let's get in here and animate this signature icon as our first example. Within this group, I have a signature vector layer, and that's what I wanna have selected here because that's the path that I wanna animate first. And then we'll just head over to effects on the properties panel, and there's our new effect that only appears because we're here within a vector set editing a vector layer. I'm gonna to click to add the stroke effect, and here we get a popover with a few properties to play with. But before I even mess with anything, I'm gonna press Command P on my Mac to go into preview mode. And you can see that even just with the defaults, we get that stroke effect where the path appears to be drawn onto the screen from beginning to end. With our current settings, it only plays once, but I'm clicking the reload button in the top left corner to make it play over and over again, just so you can get a good look at it before we move forward. But if we go back to the design canvas, and I open the effect popover again. These first two properties, length and gap, give us a little hint about what's going on behind the scenes. This is really just a dashed line where we have a gap and a dash and a gap and a dash. The gap is currently the whole length of the path and gets pushed over to reveal the dash that's right behind it. So let's take a look at what this looks like if I reduce the length and the gap all the way down to 10% of the length of the path that we're animating. I'm gonna press Command P again to go into preview mode. And now you can see it is a dashed line. And when we shorten those dashes, it becomes really obvious that it's been a dashed line all along. So I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna set this to the original 100% and 100%. And then down below, we have one more property here called offset that really comes in handy if you shorten the length, but also comes in handy if you wanna kind of reverse this whole animation. So if I set this offset to 100%, I'm saying move the whole animation down by 100% of the length of this path. So before where we had the gap and then the path and then the gap, if we move that whole thing down, we have the path and then the gap and then the path, and then the gap. So rather than starting with the gap and then revealing the path, we're gonna start with the path and then reveal the gap. So I'll press Command P again, and there we go. Starts with the path, and then it appears to get drawn away by going from the path to the gap. If the whole dashed line thing seems a little confusing, it's okay. You don't really have to understand it. You can just fiddle with the settings until you get the result you're looking for visually. But when you understand how it works, it becomes a little bit more predictable. 
So back to the canvas and back to the properties one more time. We also have the option of looping this animation. And right now it's just playing once because loop is set to no. But if we switch this to yes, we actually get three different loop modes. We get repeat, which plays the animation, then abruptly returns to the beginning and plays it again and repeats and repeats and repeats over and over again. Then we have mirror, which is kind of like a ping pong effect where it'll play forward, then play backward, then play forward, then play backward. And then we have continuous, which will play forward and then play forward again from where it left off. So it's just going to push forward and forward and forward. So there's not going to be a hard reset to the beginning like there is with repeat. But for this particular animation, I don't want it to loop. I'm going to set this to no and we'll actually use the loop property for a different example. But for this one, I'm going to set the offset back to zero. Just go with those defaults. And then here under transition, we get the usual animation settings where we can decide if we want this to ease in or ease in and out or be linear, which is really practical if you've got a continuous animation. Continuous with no easing just seems to go on at a steady pace forever. But for this one, I'm cool with ease in and out. I'm cool with the default time of two seconds and everything's looking good to me. But now let's get a little more fancy with it. Let's do an example where we layer some things up on top of one another. So again, I'll go back to the canvas and let's head over to this fingerprint icon, which is an opportunity for a kind of touch ID style animation. I don't really need this bounds layer, which was propping up the size of this when it was just a group on the canvas. Now that it's in a vector set, it's in a frame that has a fixed size. So I don't really need that bounds layer anymore. But I do want to duplicate the whole fingerprint because what I'm going for here is sort of a faded out fingerprint that gets filled in over time. So I'm going to duplicate this fingerprint group. And now we've got one on top, one on the bottom. And the one on the top, I'm actually going to rename fingerprint animated. And then the one on the bottom, I'm going to reduce the opacity down to, let's say, 20%. I'll press the number two on the keyboard. You can't see it because the fingerprint that's at 100% opacity is on top of it. But if I press command semicolon on my Mac, that's one of my favorite shortcuts, I can toggle the visibility of the group that's on top. So you can see I've got a faded one underneath and then I've got the full opacity on top. And it's the full opacity one that I want to animate all these paths. So with the group selected, I can just press the return key on the keyboard and it will select all the child layers and I can come over here, add the effect, choose the stroke effect. And I think even with these defaults, we're going to be pretty close to being good to go. Instead of easing in and out, I think I'm just going to have it ease out instead. So that way these lines start to draw in at full speed and then slow down and come to rest gradually at the end. So I think we're good. Let's preview it. I'm going to press command P again to go into preview mode. And there we go. We've got that very, very faint instance of the icon. And then we've got the full opacity icon being drawn in for that touch ID effect. So you can see how even stacking an animation on top of a static layer can make things a bit more interesting. But now let's stack up several animations and see what we can do with that. For this next one, we're going to come over here to that lotus flower icon. But it is going to be kind of small when I go to preview it. So I'm going to increase the size of this. So I'm going to press K to bring up the scale tool and I'm going to scale this by a factor of two. I want to double the height and width of this to make it nice and easy to see when we preview it. So now the idea for this icon is I do want this white path to animate in. But as it animates in, I want some colors to be animated ahead of the white. I want teal and green and then the white to finish it off. So what we're going to do is duplicate this. But first, I'm going to establish our base animation on all of these paths. So again, I'm hitting return to select all these paths. I'm going to add the effect, click stroke. And similar to the previous example, I'm going to switch from ease in and out to just ease out. And I'm also going to have this go a little bit faster. I'm going to go down to, let's say, 1.2 seconds instead of two seconds. But otherwise, I'm going with the defaults. I'm animating 100% of the length and I'm keeping the gap at 100 so we don't see anything until the path starts to come in. Cool. So I'm going to preview this. And there we go. We've got our slick little animation where the lotus flower is being drawn. But all of these paths are emanating from the bottom except for one. You'll notice this one's actually going backward. I'll play it again a few times. And you can see it's kind of starting at the top and drawing its way down where the others are starting at the bottom and drawing their way up. So I do want to show you how to fix that. Very, very easy fix. We'll go back to the canvas. We'll select the offending path by itself, which is this one right here. And I'm just going to right click and I'm going to choose reverse path direction, which visually didn't change anything. But if we go and preview this again, 
there we go. Now all the paths are being drawn from the bottom up to the top. That looks much better. So now let's layer up those colors I was talking about. We'll go back and I'm gonna duplicate the lotus flower group by pressing Command D a couple of times and I'll collapse these so we can see that I've got two duplicates. I've got the bottom, the middle, and the top. The top's gonna be the white one. That's gonna be the last thing to animate in. But the one below it, I'm actually gonna rename this color two so I don't get confused. And then the bottom one, I'm gonna rename color one. And with the group selected, I can actually come over here and edit the color of all of the strokes within it. But you'll notice this says mixed. And the reason for that is because if I expand all these, I didn't delete those bounds rectangles, which again, we don't need anymore. So with those gone, now if I select this group, you'll see these all have that white stroke in common. So again, I said I wanted to set this one to kind of a teal color. So I'll go and choose that. And since we've got things stacked on top, we can't see it. So again, I'll use that shortcut command and semicolon to hide these so we can see the teal one that I'm working on down below here. And that color seems fine to me. So I'll go to the second color. I will unhide that with command semicolon. And this one I want to make green. So I'm going to set this to a semi vibrant green, something that kind of harmonizes with that teal. And then last, we've got our white layer that's on top. And that one's already white. That one's fine. But now if we were to play this back, we've got the same animation stacked up three times. So you're only going to see the one that's on top. So this is where a little bit of delay is going to solve everything. So I'll select the second group and we can't edit the effect with the group selected. So I'll press return to select all the paths within it. And then we'll come over here. We'll come to transition because this is where we get to add the delay. And I'm just going to add a delay of 0.2 seconds, just a nice small delay, just to give the layers below it a little bit of a head start. And then I'm going to do kind of the same thing here. I'll select the white layers and I'll give them an even more significant delay. Go back into the transition settings. And for these, I'll do a delay of 0.4 seconds, right? So we've got the teal layers that are going to come in with no delay. Then we've got the green layers that are going to come in a little bit later. And then we've got the white layers that are going to come in even a little bit later still. So now I think we're ready to preview it. I'll press command P and there we go. We've got the teal leading the way. We've got the green right behind it and we've got the white to finish it off. That one's my favorite, but we'll do one last example. I'm going to go back to the canvas and let's do this little pulse icon so that way we can play with a continuous looping effect. Similar to the touch ID icon, I'm going to duplicate this. And again, we don't need these bounds layers. I want a static version of this icon faintly in the background. And then I want the bright green to be animated on top of that. So again, very similar to the touch ID. So with this group selected, I'll press the number two on the keyboard to quickly set it to 20% opacity. And let's hide the one on top so we can see what that looks like. Nice and dark and I'll make this visible again, select the path, and let's add the effect. We'll choose stroke. And this time I want the length of the path to be a bit shorter. So I'm gonna go down to 25% and then I'll press Command P to see what that looks like. Okay, I'm happy with the length and you'll notice I have to click reload in order to get this to play again. So it's not looping just yet. Let's do that next. Head back to the popover. I'm gonna set loop to yes. And I'm going to set this to continuous so that way it keeps moving forward infinitely. But if we preview this again, it kind of speeds up and then slows down and then speeds up and then slows down. We don't want that. We want this to be truly continuous. So we don't want the easing to be ramping the speed up and then back down. So instead of easing in and out, we're going to switch this to linear so that the speed is completely constant all the time. And I'll preview this one last time. And there we go. We've got our little dash, which is 25% the length of the total path. And that's moving along continuously with no easing so that the speed stays completely constant. And there you have it. Animating vector paths with stroke effects can add a ton of polish in unexpected places with just a few clicks. Go subtle with it. Be flashy with it. You do you. That's it for this one. I'll see you in the next one.